my name is Enda and I'm a photographer in Bristol from Ireland. As I delve further into the world of photography, my desire to explore filmmaking grows. This is a series of videos that forces me to practice and improve my filmmaking skills so that hopefully one day I can call myself a filmmaker. So here's the next video. One of the main reasons why I started the Becoming a Filmmaker series was to try and push myself to get better at making videos. I wanted to be able to convey a message clearly and concisely. A message that I hoped would inspire or impact someone, anyone, to do something positive in the world. Secretly, I wanted to make a video on climate change and how important it is for us to act now. Originally, I had planned for this video to go out long after I started this series. My hope was that I would have become so good at conveying a message that I would make the climate change video the best one yet. The reality is that we are running out of time. I honestly fear that by the time I acquire their skills to tell a great story, it'll be too late. So I'm going to attempt to do it now. I know it'll be rough around the edges, but I feel like I need to spread some kind of awareness now. Because time really is running out. Have you seen the news lately? This is not a drill. We are hurtling toward the day when climate change could be irrevocable. Five percent of species will become extinct. We are facing the greatest ever threat to our existence as a species on Earth. Bush fires, storms, floods, and droughts are already wrecking havoc on our communities. If we allow global climate temperatures to rise by more than two degrees, we will reach a tipping point in our planetary system, from which there will be no turning back. No matter how hard we try, time is not with us. These messages and facts are plastered all over the news and are all over social media these days. But why is it that we don't seem to actually be doing anything about it? I don't seem to be doing anything about it. Maybe I'm being naive about everything, but these days I'm faced with a guilt, a looming dreaded question. Why am I not doing anything to help fend off the greatest threat to my life and the lives of my friends and family. Our world and climate has been stable for so long and allowed our species to thrive because of three main factors, our atmosphere, our plants, and our oceans. They take the carbon dioxide we produce from us burning trees and fuels and produce clean, fresh air from which we breathe. We are producing CO2 at a faster rate than it can be drained by our natural ecosystems and the world can't handle it anymore. Leading to a rise in no sea water. levels, air Homes. temperatures, <laughs> catastrophic weather events, and global mass migration. Scientists have been raising the alarm since before the 1990s. But you know all that already. So why aren't we doing anything about it? Do you know the humanitarian side of climate change? Nearly 70% of the food consumed around the world is produced by millions of smallholder and subsistence farmers across Asia and Africa. The vast majority, women. I am a peasant farmer. Constance Ocalot is one I of these women. Devastated floods hit her village and farm in 2017 and 2018. Frustrated at the lack of aid from the government and determined to improve the lives of local women in her province of Osukuru in Uganda, Constance formed the Osukuru United Women's Network. Each week the women gathered to talk about problems they were facing in their village and farms. And over time, Constance gathered their testimonies and presented it to her local council and demanded action. Slowly over time, the government and council responded by distributing better farming equipment and introducing more efficient and less harmful farming practices. Constance is a jolting force of reality. A voice from the front lines of climate change. In a room full of presidents and prime ministers, a female farmer from Uganda is the ultimate narrative of hope. Perhaps one of the saddest climate change stories of all is the story of the small island nation of Kiribati. In March 2014, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change confirmed that small islands of the Indian and Pacific Oceans would experience total annihilation from submergence and coastal erosion due to sea level rise. 
Kiribati's president, Enote Tong's response was sobering. Whether you believe it or not, whether you're going to do anything about it or not, our fate is sealed. At some point within this century, the water will be higher than the highest point in our lands. Five years earlier, Tong paid $8 million for 6,000 acres of forested land on Fiji's second largest island, Vanualivu, 1,000 miles away. This is his last-ish effort to save his people and the country of Kiribati. Did we really leave him no other option? A staggering 300 million people are at risk of flooding caused by sea level rise. The point of these stories is not to make you feel guilty, but to inspire positive change. There seems to be no political will, so change must come from individual efforts and responsibilities. Geography does not have to be a barrier to empathy. I ask you to do something, do anything. Start small, dream big. Watch a documentary, draw it, take part in a protest, organize a protest, ask to do a project on it at school, read about it. I highly recommend Climate Justice by Mary Robinson or We Are the Weather by Jonathan Saffron Foer. I read these two amazing books and they inspired me to make this video and that's just the start for me. We have to start with our individual actions and grow from there. In times like this, I think of Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has.